We're heading to White Sands National Park. Step one, we have bought our sled. Step two, buy wax to sled. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, you liked it. This is just beautiful. I will not be touching any rattlesnakes nor climbing any mountains. That was delicious. Number one farmer's market, folks, here in Las Cruces. Oh my God, look at the kettle corn line. On our last episode, we explored springs in space in the quirky town of Truth or Consequences. And today we head an hour south to show you why Las Cruces is a must-visit city in the land of enchantment. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three and a half years, traveling through North America and beyond. Each week, we bring you along with us to show you how to live like a local in every new state we visit. All right, we are all packed up. We had such a good time at Truth or Consequences. It's definitely hard to leave. It is, but now it's time to continue our road trip through New Mexico with the stop in Las Cruces. Just about halfway between Truth or Consequences and Las Cruces is the village of Hatch, known as the chili capital of the world. And there you'll find Sparky's, a quirky diner with delicious food. It's a great place to try a Hatch green chili cheeseburger. Oh man, I love this place. You actually get a fortune cookie also. <laughs> so. Does that mean? Yeah. Caitlin, look at this, look at this cheeseburger, Hatch green chili cheeseburger. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, is right. I got a Fried chicken sandwich with green chili and cheese, pinto beans. Mm. Mm. Welcome to downtown Las Cruces. Good morning, it's actually a beautiful day. The second largest city in New Mexico, Las Cruces is situated in the Chihuahuan Desert. With the beautiful Oregon Mountains off in the distance, it's an ideal location for both outdoor enthusiasts and those of us looking for great dining, arts, and culture. We are heading to the farmer's market, which has been here since 1971. Yeah, there's been some variation of it since then. It started with local farmers who got together and wanted to sell their produce, and then they added bread makers and artisans and crafters over time. And in 2001, it was voted the nation's number one farmer's market. Number one farmer's market, folks, here in Las Cruces. <laughs> we brought Scout with us to the farmer's market because it's dog friendly. One, two, three, four. And it's not just fruits and veggies, there's tons of arts and crafts and all kinds of different booths. And we found out too that you have to actually make everything locally in order to come and be a vendor. Yeah, including the fresh produce. Uh, the people from the market will come to your farm, inspect your farm, certify that you are in fact local, and then allow you to be a vendor here at the market. You also have to live within a certain radius or within the county to be a vendor too. So it truly is local. Like you're coming here and you're finding local Las Cruces, New Mexico goods. And oh my God, look at the kettle corn line. <laughs> wow, we heard that this is like the best kettle corn in the world and the line is quite long, so I believe it. <laughs> wow. We always suggest stopping at the local visitor center when you travel, and we got some great recommendations from them for dining in Las Cruces. So we headed to Salud for dinner, which has one of the most extensive menus we've seen. Their focus is great food, great atmosphere, and great service, and we can confirm they're knocking it out of the park. They serve tapas, all-day brunch, dinner entrees, burgers, sandwiches, and local dishes. You name it, they've got it. From the wine list to their craft cocktail menu, and every dish in between, it was all phenomenal. A few of our favorite items for the roasted cauliflower, the duck tacos, the smoked salmon, and a delicious sweet bombolini. Well, we just had a wonderful night at the Las Cruces Community Theater. Anytime you're in a town, like look up the local theater, see what plays they have going on, what shows, musicals, anything, because we always find like great, great stuff. Well, and the Las Cruces Community Theater is actually celebrating their 60th year. <sighs> That's a long time. <laughs> Yeah, incredible. And I just, I love the passion. I love the enthusiasm. This is an all-volunteer organization. Keep in mind, none of these people are being paid for this. They love what they're doing. People who come to, to see these shows are used to seeing fantastic performances. We can give them that, and we're so lucky that there are so many talented people in this community who are willing to donate their time. You know, we put on major productions, and it, it takes a lot, but everybody gives her whole heart to it. That's what community theater is about, whether that's cleaning the theater or building the set. It isn't really about the show. 
for me and about why I participate, it's really about the people. The shows are the bonus. There's not one show that stands out like that was my absolute favorite show and that's why I keep doing this. It's always about the group of people that I do things with feed my soul. And hands down, that is why I stick around. A scout has always wanted to go sledding. <laughs> And she's gonna get to check that off her list today. We're heading to White Sands National Park. I'm so excited, we've never been before. And it's only an hour away from downtown Las Cruces. Piper has just informed us that she would really like to go sledding too, because she loves the B-E-A-C-H. I have to spell it because she knows that word. <laughs> Piper, are you excited? Okay, let's go. Our first stop was the visitor center to get our passport stamp <laughs> and buy a sled. They're $25 plus three bucks for the wax, which you will definitely need. Step one, we have bought our sled. <laughs> Step two. Apply wax to sled. Go oh, Piper. Are you going to be the first one to try it? It's quick brand. Kaylin, have you ever waxed the, a sled before? Piper, get down. Piper, get down. <laughs> Piper, get down. The dog has lost her mind. She's so excited. Yeah. Yeah? I guess. She said the more wax on the first one, the better. Okay, I has waxed. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. It looks great. Yeah, I just, I used a lot of techniques that I frequently use whenever I wax sleds. Um, so I tried a bunch of things like circles and then some like lines. Um, it's beautiful actually. I mean, I don't know if you can see the, the art in this. I mean, I'm sure a finger painting child somewhere would be really excited based upon my Squirrels. All right, let's go put the Should I do some more? No. Okay. Piper's up first, and she's very excited. All right, let's get up the hill. <laughs> it's so cool. Like the entire park is dog friendly as long as they're on a leash. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. Hey, hey, are you so happy? It's like the beach with no water. Her favorite. Just gotta find a sledding hill. I'm kind of nervous. Are you? Yeah. Steve? What, what could possibly go wrong, Kaylin? You're, you're on a piece of plastic that's waxed with a dog. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Ah! Oh boy. Ah! What do you think? <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> it's definitely a workout. Like I'm out of breath from climbing up the hill and like holding her and I think she likes it. Piper, do you like it? She's done it like three or four times with me. Well, she loves the sand. Yeah, she, so. was, she was digging and having a great old time. Is it so fun? Do you love the beach? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, it's time for dog number two. We've swapped Piper for Ella. We'll see how this goes. Ella, you wanna go sledding? Oh. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Good girl. Was that fun? Yeah, you liked it. <laughs> I think you're doing better than Piper. All right, Scout. Oh. We either saved the best or the worst for last. Why do you say that? Well, because I just don't know how this is going to go. The puggles are like, so much smaller, like their build, I can just kind of hold on to them. She's a little bit lankier, so I don't know. Scout, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. She's like, I'm born ready. Yeah. I was born on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> I think she 
liked it. Yeah? <laughs> was that fun? Good girl. Scott, do you want to go again? <laughs> okay, that was more fun. <laughs> after we got all the dogs their zoomies. Now we're heading for a sunset hike that is led by a ranger. Uh, and they do this obviously once a night. Uh, and tonight it's at five o'clock and it's at the sunset stroll point. Around a half mile of hiking. Uh, there's, there's two hills that we're gonna be going up on our way over here. You'll see the lovely, lovely Sacramento's. If you see that light colored banding across those mountains, it's actually the gypsum that was deposited 280 million years ago. Pretty much the same process that created the sand 10,000 years ago is the same process that creates the sand today. So every summer, we have big seasonal rains that come in. We have a monsoon season. And the monsoon season will kind of have all this rain trickled down those mountain sides. Now gypsum, is extremely water soluble. So together, the gypsum and the rain will kind of trickle down those mountains and collect at the lowest point in the basin. And here it'll create a temporary lake known as Lake Lucero. So when the water evaporates out during the fall, the gypsum will actually realign itself into these crystals. And thousands and thousands of these crystals pop up at Lake Lucero every year. Now these crystals, they're called selenite, are extremely soft. They're actually softer than your fingernail, meaning that they're absolutely no match for wind and weather and erosion. Bits of them will kind of break off and flake off until they're these little cornflake sizes. They'll get blown with the wind and bump into other things. This will make them break down and get smaller and smaller and smaller. Once they bump into things, they'll actually scratch their surface scattering the light molecules, turning them white. So over 10,000 years, 275 square miles of these tiny crystal particles have built up, creating White Sands National Park. This is just beautiful. I'm really amazed at how the colors are already transforming and the sun just set and the dunes are turning into blues and purples. It's so interesting how it like refracts and and plays with the light. Right, the mountains behind us on the opposite side of where the sun is setting turned like a vibrant purple color. And now the mountains, like you get the silhouette of it, it's just really pretty. Desert sunsets are just gorgeous. This desert, by the way, is really hard. <laughs> like the sand, it yeah. feels like it's like glue. Kaylin, yeah, Kaylin's gonna... Like, it's, it's not like beach sand at all. Our guide was explaining that um, the gypsum when water is applied to it, it almost becomes like a glue. Now, gypsum, if you're not familiar with it, is in like drywall. Uh, it's also in your toothpaste. It's and in beer. A, and beer. <laughs> it's in a lot of things. She said, I think it was over um, the span of your lifetime, you will consume 28 pounds of gypsum. Mmm. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kayla, I mean, you could start right now. Just grab a handful and just shove it in. I'm good. <laughs> We were having so much fun, we ended up staying two days at White Sands. And hot tip, if you're in an RV, you can find great free camping about 10 minutes away at Holloman Lake. Since it's a couple hours later, we have both traveled through time and space. And we are now on the other side of the mountain range at Dripping Springs, which from what we understand from the ranger, it is not so dripping. <laughs> Not enough moisture recently for the waterfall. But there's some really cool stuff along this trail. It's about a mile and a half out, mile and a half back. You don't have to tell me any of that twice. I will not be touching any rattlesnakes nor climbing any mountains. And you'll be drinking water. Oh yes, and water. Hydration is very important in the desert. In life, in general, really. We were also informed by the ranger that there are no rattlesnakes out. It is too cold right now. So Caitlin's greatest fear not happen. Yeah. A whole bunch of deer. There was a buck and another little buck and then like 
some babies and females. It's like a whole deer family out for a Sunday stroll. Oh dear. <laughs> no, they're really cool. Most beautiful water drinking shot ever. Was that in slow motion? No, but I can make it. Well, it is a mountain. It is a camp. This is Van Patten's. <laughs> so far, I'm liking this hike. I like uh, I like when there are things. Yeah, this is a 32 room hotel that was popular with the elite and the college kids. Yeah, they apparently had all the market. <laughs> And um, you would access it by a stagecoach. And the stagecoaches would stop about a quarter mile down the, the trail. And then I guess you would walk up the remainder up to one of 32 rooms out here. And the views looking down are so beautiful. It's literally just stripping. <laughs> the name is very fitting. <laughs> Behind us is what's left of a sanatorium. Uh, which was operated by uh, Dr. Boyd, who got into a massive dispute with Van Patten, refused to pay his rent. It was $25 a year, but he refused to pay his rent. Uh, and eventually, Van Patten won every court case against Dr. Boyd, but ultimately filed bankruptcy and was forced to sell Dripping Springs to Dr. Boyd for $1. $1, Bob. Look at that fireplace. This is beautiful. Sad to see it just kind of falling apart. After working up an appetite on our hike, we headed into the town of Mesilla, adjacent to Las Cruces, to try out another highly recommended restaurant. And this one was amazing. That was delicious. And leftovers. <laughs> I had no leftovers, I actually <laughs> chowed down. That was so good. The food was incredible. The decor in there, like the ambiance, all of it. It's an experience and it was one of my favorite places we've been to in a long time. Yeah, I was blown away by the quality of the food. I for sure can tell why it is so popular. It's got a long wait, no doubt, but absolutely worth it. On our next episode, we take a brief break from our New Mexico road trip series to go on a special mission thousands of miles away. Leave your best guess of what you think we might be doing in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.